we are here. We have done it. We have made it. Give yourselves a nice pat on the back. If you can, walk into your bathroom or whichever room in your home has a mirror. Give yourself a kiss right on the lips. If you can, do a victory lap around your room. Don't leave your home because we are under a prov province-wide, provincial province-wide curfew. Take a victory lap because we have finally made it to Wednesday, January 20th. 2021 i am james you are you we are here for what at home with james we have officially reached the midway point in the week i am going to say thank you so much for joining me tonight i want to take a second to engage with the chat and say i really love doing these two minute pre-show amas but i could use a couple extra questions i feel like every time we do the ama they're either about dave or they're about Connor, or they're about Dimitri. It just feels like no one's interested about James anymore. I've got a whole lot of stuff that I could talk about, but I just need someone to ask. How come I always ask the questions? Hmm? I welcome all the guests on the show. I say, how are you? What's going on? Tell me about this project. When is somebody going to ask me a question about me? When is somebody going to say, hey, James, Favorite memories of eating submarine sandwiches. Something like that. Would it kill anyone to do it? But you know what? I don't need it. I'm a big boy with a big heart and a big ego. And that's why I come here to provide entertainment three nights a week from 9 o'clock p.m. until about 10, 15. But I don't do it alone. I do it with a variety of characters and people that pop on to bring you joy, happiness, and entertainment, because that's just the type of guy I am. On tonight's show, much later on, we've got the one and only Connor Rose back here on his couch, coming to us live and in living color. What's going on in the world of Connor? We're going to find out in the third segment of the show. Coming up in just a matter of moments, it's his second week as technical director of the show. Andy Asaf is here, and we are going to be talking about what is obviously in the news today. It's Inauguration Day. Andy is one of the most politically inclined people that I know, and I'm certainly not inclined. I'm interested, and I'm intrigued, and I would say borderline curious so in order to prepare for today's segment with Andy, I really bunkered down. I woke up, I made myself a cup of coffee, I did my morning exercises in my living room, and I turned on the inauguration because nothing pumps you up more than the sweet sounds of Joe Biden reading a speech. Let me tell you something, this guy fired me up. He really, he fired me up in a way that I thought, I can't turn out to be this guy. This guy's a real snoozer. I don't mind him. I got no issue with Joe. Maybe he stopped smelling people. Don't smell people anymore. I think he's cut back on the sniffing once he got called out for that. Now then, I also want to bring something to the attention of everyone. For the past couple of weeks, I've been thinking, you know what? I need to maybe spice up the show a little bit. What can I do to spice up the show? I had a production meeting with my really fantastic production team, and the consensus was, James... I think you got to take up a bit of space on your own show. You welcome everyone in to do their segments and their little characters and their songs. How about you come up with something that you want to do on the show? So I sat around after I did my morning exercises, went to Canadian Tire, bought myself a new canister of soda stream gas. And I thought, well, what can I do on this show? You wouldn't think it would be hard to come up with something that I can do on a show that I've so egotistically named after myself. But it was tricky. And then a lightning bolt went off. A bulb above my head illuminated my senses and my imagination. In segment two, I'm going to debut a brand new segment that if it works is going to take the Twitch world by storm. And if it doesn't work, well, let's just pretend it never happened. And that'll be a secret between you, me, and Big J up above. Let's get things going. Our first guest made his debut in the tech booth last week. He was as skilled as he is handsome. Let's welcome the one and only 
Andy is after tonight's show. Andy, how's it going? Hey, James, I'm I'm doing great, man. How are you? Yeah, you you're in a really interesting control center right now. Tell me a little bit about where you are. Yeah, I'm just uh, this is I'm actually running this stream from my uh, night job here mm -hmm. at the King Cardian Power Plant. Here What's that Ontario. now? The King King Cardian Power Plant. The King Cardian Power Plant. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. So I, you know, I got a little bit of a Joe job, uh, but they got a really good supercomputer here with good graphics cards that I can run the stream off of. So sure, yeah, gotta well, be careful in yeah. this biz. But well, I am. I'm really pleased that not only are you doing tonight's tech work, but you're doing it from an actual job. So you're multitasking. I really can't say how much I appreciate this, Andrew. Hey, I love to save the show some money. You don't have to pay me because the good folks at King Cardin are, are paying me to keep them safe and keep their TVs uh, running so that they can watch yeah. the inauguration speech uninterrupted. Okay, so you were able to watch totally uninterrupted. Oh, I watched the whole stream today while at work. All right, well, Andy, what I wanted to do today is talk to you about some of what I thought were the, the best moments yes. yeah, hit of me with today's them. inauguration. Now, I've in, in the interest of keeping things simple, I've kept my list limited to everything that happened from the beginning of the morning up until when Joe Biden took his oath of office. Okay, yeah. So I tuned in around, I think it was around the time uh, that uh, Kamala's kids or their, her stepkids were coming on mm. uh, all the way up until the end of his speech. And then I kind of tuned out. So I did see uh, J-Lo. I saw Lady Gaga. It was a strange day for me, James. Of course, you know that I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. Yeah, uh, I canvassed him back for him back in March. A bit of a well, let's, well, let's, let's just let's just talk about Bernie Sanders for a second. Now, I mentioned this off air. It's been I don't know twelve hours since all these pictures of him sitting there in his winter clothes have been doing the rounds, and I'm I've had enough. A bit of a, a claw in your in your in your goat, as they would put it. Yeah, yeah, it's been a quote a claw in my goat. Yeah. This is where we're at when people are finding their entertainment from the mittens he was wearing. This guy can't even wear a pair of gloves without people being like, "That this is a joke, right? I mean, this is a joke. I can. Uh, this can be a joke." Oh, is this? He's got a sensible winter jacket on. Yeah, it's a burdened coat made in Vermont. He's supporting Vermont business, and that's um, great. That's you know, great. He's a he's sensible finally... guy. He, he, you know, he wants to stay warm. He doesn't care for the fashion. Well, everyone else is in their pea coats and why they're is like it funny? hitman style why leather funny. gloves. Why is it funny? It doesn't. I don't. Uh, maybe I. Maybe I'm getting uh, getting up there in my age. But it's like, why? Who cares? What he? This guy can't even wear clothes yeah. without people caring. Well, you know, he's the only one up there that's not a, a, a child-eating sicko, as some people would put it. So, yeah. you know, he's he's doing the, the right thing. He's, he's staying warm. He doesn't care about appearances. Uh, you know, the whole thing for me, what, what I said off air to you, was that it was very strange, is it, it felt like a big ceremony that was trying to be like, we're, we're back to normal now. Like, this is all yes. normal, right? J-Lo's here. It can't, it can't mm -hmm. be any more normal than Jennifer Lopez, right? So... And, and it couldn't be farther from the truth. I mean, like four or five days ago, I can't even, it's probably longer, but it feels like just yesterday they were, people were storming their Capitol building. Yeah. And it, you know, to pretend like that's all going to go away because Joe Biden, this nice old uh, weird hair sniffer man is going to be like America uh, enough that, you know, people are going to be like, you yeah. know what, let's give him a shot. So. Well, people, people said that the storming was one of the worst things that happened. I think that Garth Brooks not performing as Chris Gaines today is, is the worst thing that happened at the Capitol. I mean, I mean Garth is a, a super spreader. You, after, right after he finished his set, he just went around uh, smooching those on the, uh, what, what, do you, what do they call it, the West Bank, whatever whatever that place is called. Hey, yeah, um, how come no one was talking about how he was wearing jeans? How come that's not funny? Yeah, yeah, you know, he's not a good old country boy unless he's wearing jeans. Yeah. But I saw him just go right up to Barbara Bush and just be like, or not Barbara Bush. What was uh, George Bush? Yeah, Barbara name? Bush, they wheeled her uh, carcass <laughs> out for the, for they, the yeah, they, inauguration. They, they were like, we got to get Barb out here. Can we wheel Barbara Bush's yeah. body out here? And yeah. then Garth what was, Brooks. What was, was George like, W.'s wife's name? Claudia Bush? What was it? I don't think it's Claudia Bush. Chat, can you help me out? No, it wasn't Claudia Bush. Yeah, can Bush. you let us know? Uh, Karen if Bush? Could, it's not, not Karen. 
let us know and you'll you get to Laura Bush. Laura okay, Bush. so uh, Laura Bush, yeah. JJ Jamie too. You get a hundred points tonight. Good, and then also job, coming man. in, uh, James, stop trying to divide and heal nation. Now I want to be clear. I'm not trying to divide a nation. I, I just think that Garth Brooks should have performed as Chris Gaines. Look, I I don't know exactly who Chris Gaines is, but that sounds about right. Wait, hold on now. You don't know Chris Gaines? That was his alter ego. Did he have like a wrestling persona or something that like? Well, he yeah, went he had by? an alter. He was like kind of he had like a he had like a emo hair pre emo hair fad. So that kind of like I think he had eyeliner. He's very like he had a soul patch. Oh, okay, yeah. Now you're starting. Very to get dark picture. and mysterious. Yeah, he's very dark and mysterious. And did he sing country music or was it much more like? It was more adult contemporary. It was very right. moody. Right. He was, yeah, Chris Gaines, I think that would have put the inauguration over the top. That was my, I would say that was my biggest uh, disappointment of the inauguration is that Garth Brooks did not perform as Chris Gaines. Well, I mean, the whole thing what did feel like it was trying to throw us back. You know, again, Jennifer Lopez, I feel like that's like a like a, a, a real, let's do make this 2006 again, you know, or i don't know of course uh i didn't see it but they were playing the 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 ball of course you know this one but i didn't see it i wish i saw it the bucket hat guy i i saw that news in bed two nights ago i couldn't sleep i mentioned on monday my my bottom was sore from sitting all day so i went to bed earlier than usual because i had a sore bottom i couldn't sleep and i turned on twitter and it was like breaking news the new radicals will be performing at the party later on in the evening. So keep us posted if the new radicals will be playing if, their. If they night- pop on, I'm I am ending this stream immediately because I want to go see them on their their bucket hat going through the mall. Yeah, you know, see if well, like Joe puts on the bucket hat. We'll see what yeah, happens. This, this song from 1998, and then I was I was making fun of it to well, someone, this- and then somebody told me, oh. He's got the new Radicals playing because that was his his deceased son's favorite song. Yeah. And then I felt bad for making fun of So you're the asshole, him. James, because you made fun of this. No, you know what? I'm, I'm well, so over no, Hold on now. He's, I wasn't he's weaponized make... his son's death to, like, make him into a, 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 a sensible – you know, grieving figure and then just uses that power to do the worst shit. So I've, look, I've I don't want to, I'm not, look, I don't want to turn this into info wars. Here, let's, okay, James, I got the document. I don't want to turn the, all I'm saying is this, is that it's not a good song, right? It's, no, it's, it's a horrible, uh, it's, uh I think song. it's, I think it's a very nice gesture, but it can still be a bad song. That's now, if you were being inaugurated as president, what would your song be? Streets of Philadelphia. Oh, the Bruce Springsteen song from the film no, Philadelphia. No, maybe I'll do. I'll do instead. I'll still s- stick with Bruce because it's America, but I'd do his cover of um, of the band's uh, Atlantic City. Okay, so your so your inauguration song is gonna be a cover. Yeah, it's been done okay. before. See, I guess I am not too privy to all the uh, inauguration songs. I feel but like look, a, a million people have, have covered like Born in the USA and they probably use those for events all over. I want to say this. I think it's a nice gesture. It's a nice gesture, but I don't want to hear the song. And I am, you know, I'm a little worried about what these guys look like. Which guys? The, the new radicals? The, band, the, yeah, the new radicals. You want to see how they've, how they've aged. Uh, do I want to see? I'm not sure. But what I do, I, Andy, I want to tell you about some of my, my what I thought were the, the best moments of the inauguration. Yeah, hit me. Okay, so I think uh, Mike Pence standing alone for the mo- majority of the ceremony was one of my favorite moments. I mean, the and fact- I couldn't I couldn't help but pity him. Well, yeah, he is the big, the big loser of this whole event, uh, James, because, of course, just days ago when they were storming the Capitol, they wanted— some of those protesters were saying they want to hang try him. to hang him. Yeah, this is the vice president of the United States, and he, of course, didn't uh, uh, do the very illegal thing of overturning the election, and so they all hate him now. Yeah, but no, no, Democrat, even your most like right wing Democrat, will like Mike Pence either. So he's just totally lost any chance of ever being president. What do you think he's doing right now? Is he watching? Do you think? 
Is he watching this show? Do you think? I think he's wa- I think he's finally got the time mm-hmm. to do to at home with James. You should try to get him on, frankly. Get a get well, him. Well, yeah, I uh, I saw in the, I, in the in the Oval Office. I saw in the chat we got this is a name I don't recognize, Lord Raven V I, and I thought maybe that's Mike Pence. So Lord Raven, <laughs> if if poor Mike Pence, let me know. It sounds like his D and D name. He yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe Mike Pence a D and D guy. Lord Raven the sixth. Okay, you ready for my second best moment? Yeah. Now, do you see when the uh, the priest was doing the speech? Uh, briefly, I kind of tuned in to know at that point. Yeah, yeah when it got like... done, when it when he got done, he tried to fist bump uh, Jill Biden, and she left Dr. him Jill? hanging. Yeah, he he tried to fist bump Doctor Jill, and then he got nervous and pulled it away. But then uh, the other Biden son, he dove in. He's like, "I'll take one." Yeah, yeah. Hunter, Hunter comes in for the sake. Yeah. Hunter's a real a real one, right? We've learned that in the election. But yeah. what I what I like about that idea is that you're trying to go in like you know she's a doctor that's like trying to yeah. hand a doctor a cigarette you know she's not yeah gonna, she's not going to be passing germs yeah I you don't see that often a, a a priest gets left hanging no you definitely don't yeah no no except for when Obama threw his priest under the bus when he was running for president because of some controversial comments that he said. Even oh really? He used him when he was, uh, uh, of course, winning the office in Chicago, as a, you know, a total total political prop of like, here's my friend who's this minister of the the community, and and you know, of mm-hmm. course, in the states, it's big to canvas support. Anyways, I digress. Okay, what, what's number three, James? Well, I guess number three. I guess they were arbitrary. There's no real order. Was uh, Bill Clinton falling asleep? I mean. Let's let, let's be honest, man. He's not as boring. Uh, it, was he's boring. Not, it was a boring ass ceremony. So yeah, it was boring. For once, I agree with Bill on that one. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Bill seems like he's been. I always felt like you kind of patterned yourself after Bill Clinton. Me. Yeah, your love of cigars and other things. <laughs> well, thank you uh, for yeah. the cigar part, but no, no, yeah. I, me and Bill Clinton couldn't be more opposites. I would never want to model my life around that monster. If we're talking about the demons of all Democrats. It's uh, Bill Clinton, folks. I got the documents right here. Okay, uh, so your 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 anti Bill Clinton is everything that he believes in outside of falling asleep at ceremony. I, and I'm pro him, him playing sax, but yeah, all yeah. the Epstein Island stuff. Yeah, big big no for me. But what about cigars? Cigars aren't that good, James. They I wouldn't not cool. you know I've, I've I, yeah they look cool. But they've never been for me. I've never smoked a stogie in my life. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, they're very rough, um, and if you think cigarettes are, are gross, you're not going to like cigars. Okay. Um, and this is coming from someone who's quitting smoking right now. How uh, um, This is very big, Andy. This, this breaking, breaking news. Breaking news here. This was, this was part of the – I ask that all of my technical directors not smoke. Well, it Andy, was, how, how's it, it going? It was partially that, but of course I'm in a nuclear power plant, so you can't – be smoking yeah. but uh i've been using these guys of course the uh thrive tablets right oh so is that what the thrive sounds more like some type of uh erection enhancement pill that you would hear I mean, sponsored <laughs> on a podcast or hopefully this show at yeah some they got a blue tube vibe to them for sure um yeah. but you know they're they're good they're these little like chalky tablets that i just yeah. pop in and it's like smoking a cigarette you know Oh, now coming in from the chat right now is, quote, they do both. Now, that's a great idea. That would be good to double up on them. I always find they kind of it kind of gives me a vibe that I'm taking, like, uh, uh, a birth control. You know? Okay. Of course, I, I, I can't. I wish there was male birth control. I would the take first, it. The first ever cigarette suppressant, but also male enhancement. Male enhancement birth. and birth control. Let's throw all three of them. Wow. Okay. So it's a real uh, triple threat. So it's getting you going, but. You know, you got none of the risk, you know. Got it. You can you can uh, smoke your cigarette but not get the lung cancer, if you yeah. know what I mean. Well, look, uh, Andy, it's uh, it's Inauguration Day. I've been promoting the show as such, but everyone thought it was just because of the, the inauguration of Joe Biden. But today's actually your Inauguration Day. Okay. I did not know now, this is news to now, me, folks. I have the documents here. This is coming in yeah. on the facts, okay? What you didn't know, because I kept you in the dark last week, is I, of course, everyone needs to go through a training session. Yeah. And you've gone through every facet of it, but the last 
portion of the training is you have to do the tech for the show. Okay. And if you do a good job, then you become a full-time tech on the show. If you don't do a good job, it's almost like you don't make it past the primaries. Right. Or last this is, week this kind of has was, got this has got speaking of politics this has kind of got like a secret society vibe where this is the last test whether or not i'll keep the secrets of the show well andy can i tell you something yes well you passed the test i did today it's already is, done today is your inauguration so what i'm gonna need to do is ask you if you are prepared to be inaugurated as the third in command <sighs> number three wait who's number two I guess it's any type of combination of Dave Kaufman or Dimitri Kirez. Okay. And so I'll be right under them. Yeah. Now, there was a three-way tie for first in command between the two aforementioned gentlemen, but also Carla Ma. Hmm. She's on vacation, so she has vacated her seat. Now, does that make her fourth in command? I feel bad saying that, so we're going to say that she's on hiatus. She's on sabbatical. Okay. Hmm. You're going to be okay. stepping into her chair, which makes you third in command. Okay. Andy, are you ready for your inauguration? I got to admit, this is uh, this is exciting, James. I'm, I'm honored to be selected. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, thank you, Naive Adventures. I passed the probation period. I'm excited for this adventure, yep. James. What do I have to do to yeah. get inaugurated now? Well, that, as like you may have noticed, there's, there's an oath that you need to take, but of course we can't do that oath unless you put your hand on an important piece of writing. Okay. Now, I would never be so bold as to ask you to affiliate yourself to some type of religious sector. So I've asked you covertly to put some literature together that you would feel holds that same type of importance. So what have you prepared? Okay, well, I didn't know it was going to be used for this, but when you said... You know, just find something that you you like that you find important. I, I got my believe Ripley's Believe It or Not. Sorry, the green screen's kind of yeah. Um, uh, comic book that I have. Yeah, this is of course uh, one called um, Beware the Power of a Dead Witch. Now, what it, does this say? Which like uh, which edition this is? Is like no, number five? No, like a witch. Like ah ha ha, my pretty. Mm. You know, this is the witch, and this is the lady. I guess getting bewitched. There's like a cat here. Sure, I think I think I've heard enough of a breakdown of this uh, fine piece of work. Yeah. Now, is this what you've selected? Yeah, let's do this. I'll, I'll swear on this. Yeah, so you're gonna want to put your uh, right hand over it, and Andy, I'm gonna want you to repeat after me. Okay. I, Andrew Asaf, do solemnly swear. I, Andrew Asaf, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute the duties of technical director. The duties of, sorry, I still got a little bit of a thrive. The duties of technical director. On At Home with James. On At Home with James. And will, to the best of my ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Start the stream on time or close to on time. Start the stream on time and or close to on time. I'll do my best on that one. Facilitate smooth transitions between guests. Facilitate smooth transitions between guests. And avoid all bloopers. And avoid all bloopers. Blunders. Blunders. And boners. And bon well, and boners. Okay, I can agree to that. Just so help you, correct. God. So help me, God. Andrew, congratulations. You are officially third in command <sighs> as technical director on the technical director team of technical Ooh. directors. On At Home with James. Well, I guess I could tell this fucking asshole I quit because this sounds like a way better gig. All right. I've Thank also you, instituted – I've also I'm, – I'm glad to announce I've instituted a new feature on the show called James's Swear Jar. Okay. okay. This is just James's instituted. Swear Jar. So, yeah. So, the F word is $2. <laughs> Anything outside of the F word is $1. So, you said the – a H word. So you now yeah. you have got three dollars in the swear jar. Okay, I gotta put three away. Got it. Yeah, I'll get on. But that. you know what? Otherwise, you're doing a heck of a job, Andy. Any uh, any thoughts about your inauguration here? Um, you know, I just hope that uh, uh we as a show can come together, mm -hmm. uh, and victory. So yeah. is that a uh, is that an Obama impersonation? You know, my Biden always ends up Obama. Can I? Can you do Biden? 
Yeah, I know. I really only do the older presidents. Okay, what's your best president you could do? Before I go, I want to hear the this. best best president that I could do. Uh, maybe I would say maybe like uh, Ronald. No, nah, I'm I'm torn between Ronald Reagan and uh, Richard Nixon. Nixon's a fun one. Yeah, yeah. That didn't. Now Nixon's uh, more I'm like not a, a crook. You know, uh, well, uh, I uh, I certainly think that the uh, American people uh, they've. Uh, They've uh, done their due diligence, and now nah, you know I I'm not I need to work on it. You I'm, lost I'm, a little at the end, but it was, yeah, good. I'm, it was I'm, a good start. Yeah, it was yeah, very I, marbly I, in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, I'm not happy with that. I'm gonna work on it. I could do a pretty good uh, uh, Bush Senior. Okay, we're gonna hear Bush Senior, then we're gonna move on. Yeah, then we gotta go. Uh, yeah. Have a good night now, James. It's me, George Bush Senior. <laughs> that sounds like Kennedy. Don't ask not what for your country does for you. That one's pretty good, right? That one made me feel ask, better about my ask, my ask Nixon. yourself. You get what you give. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm. Uh, I resent that you made another new radicals <laughs> reference, Andy. I'm going to send you back to the booth. Thanks so much for that. And Thank uh, you, yeah. James. All right, hit, bye everyone. Hit, hit the bench. Well, that was Andy Asaf. He's in the tech booth tonight. I want to reference something I just saw in the chat, courtesy of Farm Boy, Farm Boy, the B in the boy, spelled with the number eight. Good Nixon. Now, I appreciate that. I was maybe 30% confident as I did that impersonation. So earlier on, I mentioned about how, you know what, maybe it's time I start putting together my own segments for this show. If you were looking on Instagram today on at at home with James show on Instagram, you probably noticed that I wrote James tries some stuff. Now you're probably thinking, what does this mean? James, is he going to try drugs? Is he going to try exercising? I did that this morning. What's he going to try? Is he going to try to loosen up a little bit? And if your guess was loosen up a little bit, you're correct. I thought to myself, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm becoming a bit of a parody on my own show, this cranky guy who's uh, complaining about stuff, and maybe he's uh, putting on the Ritz a little bit. I thought, well, what can I do to get out of this way of behavior? And I thought, well, certainly anyone looking for help needs to, of course, find that help. But where do you find good help these days? And that's when I began to scour the internet far and wide, up and down, left to right, from website to message board. And then it occurred to me, I need a life coach. I need a life coach. And that's when my searching began to narrow and narrow and narrow. Now, let's face it. There's a lot out there. There's so many life coaches. So I needed one that I thought could do the trick for me. And I started to try to jog. Do I know of any life coaches? Have I ever seen any in, in person at some type of uh, a conference or something like that. And that's when it hit me. Been seeing one almost my entire life, not in person, but on TV. Now, Andy, you're out there in the booth. I would like for you to make a full transition to who I've discovered is going to help me along the way. That's right. If you're sitting at home and you predicted that I will be trying to enlist the help of Jojo Savard, you are correct, and now you have 1,000 points. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Jojo Savard, she's widely known for her appearances on infomercials and commercials on both English and French television. She's also known for being extremely tanned, but also very voluptuous. Now, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm not really interested. But what I am trying to do is see, can I get Jojo Savard to appear on this show to either help guide me towards a more blissful life, or can I get her to at least do a reading for me? Because of course she is an astrology expert. So if you haven't been to her website, I implore you to visit it now. Pull up a new tab. It's Jojo Savard, J-O-J-O-S-A-V-A-R-D. Dot com. Now, the website is truly bad. Headline reads, with JoJo, what you see is what you get, 
and what you get, you never forget. So that's a nice rhyme. World famous life coach, astrol. That's, I don't know if that grammar works properly. World famous life coach, astrologer, Jojo Savard is a one of a kind, flamboyant, colorful, magical spirit with a super dynamic energy and wisdom that will inspire, guide, awaken, and encourage you to your own path of freedom, happiness, perfect health, and true love. Now, if this isn't what the doctor ordered, then I don't know what is. Now, if you go to, there's pictures of her with Jay Leno. All of these pictures seem like they could be recent, but they were taken, looks like the late 80s or the early 90s. Now, what I'm intending to do with this segment is this. First, I want to make sure that she's who I'm looking for. So I went to the testimonials Quote, one of Canada's most recognizable celebrities. Is that true? I'm not sure. Meet Jojo, a powerhouse of energy. Okay. Let's continue reading the, 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 the testimonials. She still does the weekly gig with stellar ratings. This one's uh, my personal favorite. Jojo possesses the motivating power of Tony Robbins and the sensuality of Charo. So if you're looking for someone to help guide you and you want them to be sensual, JoJo's the one for you. Now, how do I get JoJo on this show? Of course, I'm going to go to the contact page. Now, what I'm going to do with you, our audience, is I'm going to write JoJo Savard live on the air right now. Full name, James McGee. That's a no-brainer. Email address, at home with James show at gmail.com. So if you want to send me an email, you know what you can. Subject. Now, this is where it gets dicey. Most people, when they get emails, they see this subject, and that's either the make or break. How do I make it clear to JoJo Savard that I'm the type of guy she wants to talk to? So the answer is we'll get back to that. Let's go to the message right away. Hi, JoJo. My name is James, and I am, now this is where we got to really sweeten the pot. That first line, if we make it past the subject, is where it's either going to be a make or break type of thing. Let's say I am a, a performer, let's put actor in there, and content creator. That's probably, that's got enough buzz to, a content creator based out of Montreal. There we go. She's from Montreal. This should do the trick. A bit of a home base connection there. The reason I am getting in touch with you is because I host, let's say, an online talk show that takes place on the burgeoning. Is Twitch burgeoning right now? Let's put burgeoning. If you don't think it's burgeoning, I'll take it out. On the burgeoning online streaming platform, Twitch. Now, we have to make it seem like this show is a big deal. Not that it isn't a big deal, but it could be a bigger deal with the help of Jojo Savard, who can help guide me to blissfulness. Now, Sid, in the chat, Twitch is fully flowered. Maybe I put that in there the fully flowered website, Twitch. Let's get back to it. Now, if you're just tuning in, I'm emailing Jojo Savard, life coach and astro astronomer, astrologer, doesn't matter. We have a vast audience who tune in three nights a week to enjoy interviews and conversations with an eclectic group of, I uh, want to say here, guests. Yeah. They vary from comedians, experts, doctors, scientists, political pundits, and so many more. Let's, you know, I want to get a little, let's, let's throw this in there. I'm going to cut right to the chase. I would love if you would consider 
making an appearance on the show. I've been a lifelong fan and would love the opportunity to chat with you in front of a worldwide audience. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Until then, thank you for your time and happy new year. Now, this is the thing. The question is, is she going to answer an email like this? My concern is I'm going to cut right to the chase. That could get me in trouble. So if you're in the chat and you want to make any edits to this email, let me know. Once again, it goes like this. Hi, Jojo. My name is James, and I am a performer, actor, and content creator based out of Montreal. The reason I'm getting in touch with you is because I host an online talk show that takes place on the highly popular online streaming platform, Twitch. We have a vast audience who tune in three nights a week to enjoy interviews and conversations with an eclectic group of guests. They vary from comedians, experts, doctors, scientists, political pundits, and so many more. I'm going to cut right to the chase. I would love if you would consider making an appearance on the show. I've been a lifelong fan and would love an opportunity to chat with you in front of a worldwide audience. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Until then, thank you for your time and happy new year. Lifelong fan, first time fan mailer. That's not bad. That's not a bad idea. Also coming in right now, I like this new segment. That's not bad either. Ad athletes, let's do that too. Hey, James, Andy here. Yeah, Andy, I can hear you. Do you mind if I make a suggestion? Yeah, what please about, do. What about asking, or maybe this is too bold Yeah. on a first-time uh, mm -hmm. contact here, but what if you ask her uh, to maybe do a reading on the show? Is that something she does? She's a she's a bit of a fortune teller too, right? Yeah, okay. So is it, I'm going to cover the chase. love for you because you're making an appearance on the show. And maybe if you are interested, perhaps we could do a live reading. Hmm. Should I be a little less subtle or should I go harder with this? I say shoot for the stars. Shoot for Literally, the stars. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say, you. you know, I'm going to end it with that. Hmm. I think she'd like that. I think that's up for her. I am sure that you get many emails and inquiries like this one. But I want to shoot for the stars <laughs> and reach out in hopes that we can connect in the future. There's also a good co uh, comment here, James, by mm -hmm. uh, Naive Adventures. Add why, why do you want her on your show? Why her and not someone else? Oh, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Also coming in, avoid the word shoot in fan mail. You know what? That's a great <laughs> idea. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it to, I'm going to reach for the stars. I'm going to reach for the stars. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the appropriate adjustments. I'm going to send this email tonight. And hopefully I'll have an update for you when we get back together this Friday when we have so much more show on tap. There you go. Jojo Savard, I see you on my screen and I'm hoping for the best as I not only shoot for the stars, but I reach for the stars. So who knows? Maybe in a future world, Jojo Savard will be a guest on this show we are going to move along to our final segment of the night this person is a valued guest on this show people love him people admire him people are really rooting for him let's welcome connor rose to at home live on twitch connor how's it going buddy
Connor, I think you're muted there, buddy. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, James, how's it going? Connor, do you remember Jojo Savard? No, but I saw her picture. She's really beautiful, James. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, if I had Jojo on the show, do you think you'd be interested in having your uh, fortune told or something like that? <laughs> yeah. If she's not already taken by you, it sounds like you're writing a pretty romantic email. No, I'm not trying to ask her out. I'm trying to ask her to be a guest on the show. I'm not trying to romantically court Jojo Savard. Why not, James? Why not take the plunge? Well, I'm not really romantically interested in Jojo Savard. All right, then, yeah, I for sure love to hang out with her. Okay, so you want to hang out with Jojo Savard? Yeah. And what do you think your email to Jojo Savard would say? Hey, you're really beautiful. I saw you on my friend's show that I'm on. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're, like, interested, like, maybe we could grab a coffee. Hey, I could get you a discount. Right, uh, your Tim Hortons discount, discount card. Yeah. Uh, All right. You're beautiful. Your hair is so long. Um, mm. uh, love, Connor. Oh, you're going to end it with love. That's a strong ending to an email. Uh, sincerely, Connor. Oh, that's pretty good. Look, we're all open to notes on this show. I let the audience help me with what I wanted to say to Jojo Savard. You know, it's yeah. all coming around. Yeah. Uh, Connor, yeah. what's going on with this giant jacket? James, I'm so cold. You're cold? Yeah, like, it's really cold, no? Well, I mean, I, I have my heater on, and I've got a couple layers on. I'm quite comfortable. Maybe, uh, did you pay your hydro bill? Yeah, yeah, it's like my heat's on. I just, like, feel quite chilled right now. Look, it happens. Sometimes you come in from the cold, it gets to your bone, you get a little shiver. You yeah. know, it happens. You're going to warm up. Yeah. You, gotta, that's you know what you should do is you have a nice warm drink. Yeah. Yeah. I made myself a coffee. I have it right here. Actually. Great. So, Connor, let me know what's going on in your world these days. <sighs> James, it's been quite a week. Has it? Okay. Well, I could tell that smile. You've been up to no good. James, mm -hmm. the con man is back. The con man is back. He's broken out of jail and he's running amok. James, let me just say, like, last week I was so heart, like, I was still heartbroken. Mm -hmm. I just failed my driver's test. Yeah, you were like, damaged. Super damaged. Mm -hmm. And now I realize that, like, in order to fix your damage, you have to, like, get with another girl okay so that's your romantic advice this is the first romantic advice that you've ever passed on to the audience on this show in order to get over your heartbreak what was that now you have to get with another girl get with another girl so you were talking to us about this person that you uh were crushing on a little bit yeah at the laundromat yeah cordelia She's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, she was really easy to talk to, but as I said, like she invited me to this COVID party. Right. Yeah. So people who weren't here, and of course, unfortunately, due to a blooper, blunder, and boner on my part, the episode no longer exists. You you let us know that Cordelia goes to underground parties that are just these large gatherings during during this crisis. Yeah, and she invited me to one of these parties. I wrote a poem about it. Like, yep. and Would you like to share that poem for people that didn't hear it? Sure, James. I'm always like willing to share my work whenever this you want. is This is a great place for people to share their art with the world. It certainly is. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Yeah. So this was my poem about Cordelia because I felt so conflicted. Mm -hmm. We fell in love in a dangerous place. Oh, sorry. The poem's called Forbidden Fruit. Right. 
We fell in love in a dangerous place. There's a disease out there, one we can't chase. I want to see your boobs, but I think those chances are down the tubes. Unless I break the law, putting my friends and family in danger, you to me must remain a stranger. Yeah, the performance this week was a lot more confident and very stern. James, it's because I can't hide it anymore. Cordelia and I have hooked up. You guys hooked up? Okay, so take me through what happened. Okay, well, I followed your advice. I felt really wrong about going to the party. So I said, I'm sorry, Cordelia. I think you're really cool and really beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I can't risk putting my friends and family in danger. I'm not going to go to your party. And she was like, that's okay. I understand. Oh, that's very nice that she understood. Yeah, I thought so too. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, what are you doing right now? And when was, was like, this? Take me through when this was. Okay, this was on Tuesday. What time? Like noon. Okay. She was like, first she wrote like, you up? At was, noon? She was asking if you were up? Yeah. All right. And you were? And I was. So I was like, yeah, what's up? And she was like, what are you doing right now? And I was like, nothing. And she was like, come to the mat. She met the laundry mat. Yeah. So I was like, okay, like, what's going on? And she was like, no one's here. Come, I can lock the door. I was like, whoa, this is intense. Forward, right, James? Yeah, this is forward. This is, I might have to take a sip of water. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. Yeah. So anyways, she, She's like coming out. So I was like, okay, like, what are you going to do when a beautiful woman says coming out? Like, you're going to go, right, James? So I like ran out of my house. I like went to the laundromat. Like, no how far is the laundromat from your house? It's just around the corner. Like, okay. Like a three minute walk. Okay. So I went there and she like locked the door behind her. So she locked the laundromat during business hours? Yeah. Connor, it sounds like you got yourself a bit of a bad girl. Bad girl is an understatement, James. This chick is nasty. <laughs> so then she's, wow. like, she's like, come to the back room. So I'm like, oh, there's a back room. Okay, okay. This one, I was like really nervous. I really like that that's what surprised you. Whoa, there's a back room? I, who knew that laundromats had back rooms? Who knew? So I'm like, okay, whoa, let me see. So cool. So she brings me in and she's like, sit down on this chair. And so I sit down. James, she like got on top of me. And like... Like I got a stiffy right away. So I had to push her off. Wait, okay, so. Oh. So she sat you down in the back room and she, she sat on top of you, it sounds like. Can you describe how she sat on you? This has never happened to me before, like. Like, obviously, like, I've been in a bed with, like, Nancy McConnell and stuff, but, like, we were just cuddling and stuff. Like, there was nothing that crazy. Like, she, like, got on top of Like, she, like, put one leg on one side, the other leg on the other. Oh, so she straddled you. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty wild. It was wild. I had to push her off. All right. So you, you got an erection. <sighs> she was supposed to say it like that. <laughs> well, how did you put it? I got a stiffy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I should be using that term instead. I don't know whether I should put that in the swear jar or not. Let's continue. Anyway, so. Wait, so you shoved her off? Well, I was embarrassed, James. Like, Connor, can I tell you something? I think she probably wanted you to have one. You think? 
Well, she sat on your lap. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, it's always sort of been like an embarrassing thing. Like, I'm always trying to hide that. So, like, I just, it was just- always trying to hide it. What do you mean? James, I'm sure you can relate. But I don't understand. What do you mean always trying to hide it? Were you hiding it from Nancy and her daughter, Rhonda? No, but they weren't close enough to feel like to see it or feel it. Right. Well, yeah, once again, I think the fact that that Cordelia invited you over, she locked the door of the business that she is employed at, took you to a back room, forced you to sit down on a chair, and then straddled you means that she probably wanted you to be aroused. In fact, she was probably aroused by you. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> That I can that I can agree with. Okay, so what happened next? James, it was so crazy. So anyway, she like, I was like, no. And she was like, she's like, just let me, just let me. And I was like, okay. Okay. So then she like she like got back on top of me and I was like, okay. And I was just like, like trying to like hold it in. Wait, trying to hold it in. Hold yeah. what in? James. I don't understand what you think about biology here. <laughs> You're making me laugh. Yeah, that's fine. Look, this is a comedy show, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what was your what was your funniest moment at the inauguration today? Oh, uh, I know when uh when Andy was like, what did he like put his hand on the thing? And oh, like, that was your, oh, that inauguration. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So she gets back on top of you. you it, can I ask you a question? You're nervous, but you like it, right? Like this wasn't a, it was welcomed. Yeah. Like very mixed emotions. I got to say like, yeah. Yeah. What were the emotions? Well, like shame, embarrassment. Why were you ashamed? James, like, as you know, like being a guy, like you spend your whole life trying not to get a stiffy and then like, it just happens. Yeah. And you like, you're in a position where it's like, you can't hold it in anymore and hold it back. And like, yeah. and then like, so true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there was that, there was like excitement. Cause like, mm -hmm. I Oh, like I was about to see her boobs and that made me really excited too. Yeah, you know, and you've had a crush on her for a few weeks now. So this is this great. Yeah, for a few weeks. But James, in my history, like in my experience, this is going very, she went very fast. Yeah, yeah. This is very, well, how did you, were you happy with that? Were you? I was kind of taken off guard. I wasn't expecting it at all. Well, that's the thing. You're, you were used to a certain way with, Nancy, where she was giving you baths and dressing you up like Dennis the Menace. Yeah. And now you've got a woman who sits you down and takes control. Did she ever? Okay, so take us, I'm scared, but take us through what happened. Well, also, like, I discovered something, James. Like, as much as I've been talking about boobs. Sure. Mm-hmm. Butts are pretty cool too. Butts are pretty cool too. That's going to be the quote on your tombstone. <laughs> no, that's like a, it's a, it's not a, I don't mean that you're going to die soon. I mean, that's just like a joke. One of these things that we say, like hilarious quotes that would never go on a tombstone. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so what happened? Why, how did you discover your, that, that butts are cool? Well, she like took my hands and like put it on her butt. Whoa. So this is what you were saying when you said she was quote nasty. Oh yeah. And then she like, was like, we were like smooching and it was like, I was like, and she was like tr pulling off my shirt. I'm yeah. Like, oh man, James. And then like, she took hers off. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had to run out of there. It was like too intense. Right. Okay. So you ran out. Yeah. I was like, I was like, 
you're so beautiful. And then I ran out. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about running out? That's, that's, it could send mixed signals. Yeah. Like, I just like stood in the snow for a little bit, like right outside. And she like came out after and she was, was your shirt on. No, James, I just ran. Like I really so just you ran. ran. So you ran outside with an erection and no shirt on. That's right. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's an instance where you're going to want to try and hide it. Yeah, no kidding. What like, kind of pants were you wearing? Sweatpants. Oh. So anyone who was walking by this laundromat at about, let's say, anywhere between 12 and 1 o'clock on Tuesday saw a grown man in sweatpants and no shirt with an erection standing in the snow? Yeah, I went right for the snow. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, right? It's, it shocks the senses. That's not very sexy. No, I had to like calm down. Like otherwise, I was just gonna like explode. Yeah. Well, take us through what happened next. She ran after you. I think you mentioned. Yeah, she ran after me, and she was like, "Connor, what's wrong? What's wrong?" And I was like, "It's just moving so fast." Yeah. Like, and that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, James. Thanks. That's totally fair. Oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Like I've been having like a lot of like mixed emotions again. Yeah. Since the since the incident, so is that what you've been calling it? The incident. incident. Yeah. Well, can I make? Can I say something? Sure. It sounds like you liked what was going on, but you also communicated your wants and your concerns, and there's nothing bad about that. Yeah. Yeah, I had to tell her like, whoa, 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 mm. let's slow down. Like, yeah. And then I had to tell her that like, I've never done stuff like that before. Well, okay, that's fair. I think there's probably a better setting to tell her than while you were outside in the snow without a shirt on. But look, these things can overwhelm us. Incidents. Yeah, sure can. Also, have you had any communication since? We've been texting back and forth a bit, like. And how's the t how's the exchange? Is it a fun energy or is it kind of awkward? Yeah, it's like really fun. She like parties a lot. Like she like right really is not worried about COVID. Like mm -hmm. where her that's where her and I differ. Like I'm a little bit more like careful. Right. So maybe that's playing into your feelings of concern. Is that you kind of. Right. You mentioned that you were kissing. I can't imagine you wearing masks and she was sitting on top of you. So there's certainly no distance being created there. No. Yeah. So I think that it's fair. It's a cause for concern. Yeah. So, yeah. So she like, she tells me about the, like, I'm like, I'm not going to go, but like, you go have fun. And yeah. she like tells me about the party she goes to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I wrote a poem about it. Okay. I'd love to hear this poem. What's it called? It's called Cordelia. Okay, straight to the point. Very cool. Let's hear it. This is Connor Rose with his latest poem, Cordelia, on Twitch. So this one has like more of a beat. Beat? All right. Wow, you move fast. I hope I can last. My ding -a ling is in full swing. I've never felt so spelled. You're an animal, could eat you like a cannibal. So glad we met, I have no regret. Wow, there is a lot going on. Can you read that poem again, just a little bit slower? Cordelia. Wow, you move so fast, I hope I can last. My ding-a-ling is in full swing. I've never felt so svelte. You're an animal, could eat you like a cannibal. I'm so glad we met, I have no regret. Okay, so your ding a ling was in full swing. That's a bit, that's this one of your, this is a dirty poem. It's like some of my erotic poetry, James. You do erotic poetry? Yeah, I dabble. You dabble, yeah. Well, I'd love to hear some of those sometime. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is everything okay? Yeah, James, I'm just getting a little tired. Well, you know, I, what's your usual bedtime? It is five after 10. We're about to wrap up soon. Yeah. 
Do you mind if I just lie down for a bit? Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I noticed uh you're taking a sip of what are you drinking over there? Tea, coffee, hot chocolate? <sighs> it's coffee. Yeah. Maybe it will warm me up, you think? Yeah. Now, I've noticed you keep making faces every time you take a sip. What is it, a bad brew, strong? No, I just can't taste it. Like, it just tastes like water. You can't taste your coffee? No, it doesn't really smell like anything either. Now you're tired and you're cold and you can't taste anything? Oh. Connor, Has this ever happened to you? No. But it sounds like something that I've heard of. You, know, you can't you can't taste anything, you can't smell anything, you're tired, you're cold. Is there anything wrong with your bones right now? Do you feel sore? Oh my god, James. Are you psychic? Like that's exactly how I feel right now. Yeah, I would never, I'd never call myself a JoJo Savard. Uh, Connor, I hate to tell you this. It sounds like you've got all the symptoms of COVID. James, are you kidding? Like this is, I know it's a comedy show, but like, I'm not, that's not something that's very funny. It's not something you should joke about. I'm not joking. I'm just basing it off of what you just told me. You said you can't smell your coffee or taste it. You're cold and you're tired. There's no way, James. I am so careful. Connor, you were making out with a woman who goes to, to anti-COVID parties. I think Cordelia gave you COVID. No. I think what you should do is text her to see how she's feeling. James, it's impossible. I don't go to any of the parties, so how? Yeah, but I... Con Connor, if she goes to the parties, she doesn't care about creating personal space and distance between people, and they're not wearing masks, right? Okay, so let's. I want to show you something here. I'm going to use my fingers. Let's say this is someone at the party, right? That's someone at the party. Let's give this person a name. What are we going to name this person? Um, how about Genevieve? Genevieve, great. So let's say Genevieve is at the party and Genevieve has COVID. Now let's say Cordelia goes to the party, right? But Cordelia doesn't have COVID. Now, is there dancing at this party? I think so. So let's say... Remember, Cordelia, Genevieve. Genevieve has yeah. COVID, Cordelia doesn't. Let's say they're dancing. I'm starting to contract it to your fingers, James. Okay. Let's say they're dancing and they get close and they're talking to each other. Now, what would happen if Genevieve had COVID and transmitted some of her droplets to Cordelia? Then, oh no. But I'm going to add some of this. So let's, now Genevieve leaves. And Cordelia leaves and goes to work. But then she invites Connor over and they start kissing. Connor, you better go get a, a COVID test. And you might want to get in touch with Cordelia. Let her know you're having some symptoms. Oh, my God, James. This is You're like, yeah, right, right in the chat right now. Cordelia gives COVID to Connor. Connect the dots. Yeah, thanks. We just connected them. Well, let's be let's be nice to the audience. No, I'm actually thanking them. Oh, that was an actual okay. Well, uh, Connor, I'm really sorry, man. But look, maybe you don't have it, right? But I think it might be good if you get a test. Okay. Oh no, James, this really changes everything. I was so happy. But you can still be happy, right? Just try to take care of yourself. Stay in the house. Have you been seeing anyone? Just like the people at my local grocery store and pharmacy. You mean other people shopping? Yeah. Okay. Well, Connor, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you, okay? Oh, James. Connor. Do you think I could still see Cordelia? I mean, probably not. No, you're going to want to get a test and go home. 
But if we both have it, I mean. Then I guess that's fine. Oh, okay, James. I'm gonna do what you say and get a test. All right, yeah, yeah. You can do what I say. Oh, sorry. Good luck, Connor. Okay. Bye, James. That is Connor Rose. He might have COVID. Well, on that note, I want to thank everyone so much for being here tonight. I want to thank Andy Asaf for not only being our technical director, but also being a guest on tonight's show. Connor Rose, fingers crossed, thoughts are with you during this difficult and uncertain time. I also want to thank you so much in the audience for indulging a brand new segment of what might be a pathway to create more content just like this on this show. We will see you this upcoming Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Dimitri Kirez will be here along with so many more. Until then, I am James. You are you. We were here. Good night, goodbye, farewell, and of course, be well.